Hello everyone, welcome back to a new interesting case study. My name is Vijesh and today we are going to see a new case study based on multiple same column predicates. So let's explore this. So this is a new SQL query. Select e dot first name, e dot last name, e dot hire date from employees e comma departments d. So this is a join operation between your employees table and the departments table where e dot employee id in 100 to 105 and e dot employee id is greater than zero so you see there is a same column which has been introduced twice in the where part of the clause right and then there is a join operation e dot department id is equal to d dot department id so in order to tune this query let's go back to our fundamental approach which states that you have to start with such a column in the where part of the clause which is going to give me very less number of rows but in this case as we see employee id has been occurring twice in the where part of clause and that too with different conditions right so in such cases what we have to do it's very simple like i said let's apply the fundamental approach itself whichever condition is going to give the less number of rows that is the column which oracle should first access so that very less number of rows are fetched first and then filter it out right so if you see in the employees table employee id is the primary key so e dot employee id in 100 to 105 is always going to give you only six rows because employee id is a primary key in your employees table but e dot employee id greater than zero is going to qualify for your entire table because definitely all your employee ids are greater than zero so in order to tune this query we have to start with e dot employee id in 100 to 105 and then filter it out to see whether the employee ids are greater than zero or not we obviously know that all the employee ids between 100 to 105 is greater than zero so this condition employee ID greater than zero automatically be a, will be a part of the filter clause but none of them will be filtered out so and then whatever employee ids has been scanned between 100 to 105 will go for this join operation and this join operation is again going to give me back six rows because in the department table department id is a primary key right so just to brush up our concepts once again we should not be starting with the join operation first right because if you start with the join operation i have to scan all the department ids from the departments table i have to scan all the department ids from the employees table and then do a join operation so this is a very lengthy approach right so that is the reason why we have to go with the fundamental approach that is nothing but accessing a column in the where part of the clause which is going to give me very less number of rows so the conclusion is i have to start with e.employee id in this 100 to 105 and then go for the join operation so that i am going to give my exact six rows as part of the select output right so let's see whether oracle has actually did it or not so this is the plan which oracle has taken right and if you create a parent child relationship for this then the third operation is the innermost and this is the first operation which is going to get executed later on second will execute now let's see what the third operation is it does a index full scan on employee id using an employee id index and the third operation if you see it is accessing the employees table using e dot employee id greater than 0 right that means it is scanning for all the employee ids in the employees table which obviously we don't want so that is the reason why you're seeing an expected rows to be 107 right and then the second operation will execute which is table access by index row id that means it is filtering out from all the employee ids which have been scanned from 100 to 105 right so this is something which we wanted to avoid and then it is doing a join operation with the departments table that is the fourth operation here so obviously oracle is doing the exact opposite we want oracle to start with e dot employee id in this right and then it should go with the filtering on the employee id greater than zero right so in order to fix this what we can do uh, we'll just again pass a simple hint that is leading e right that will tell oracle to start with the employees table right but again if you see both the columns are having the employees itself so how the leading e is going to help is by using a nested loop hint so when you use a nested loop hint the oracle's expectation is to work on a row source which will be smaller right so in this case if i start with e dot employee id in this row source i'm, I'm going to get six rows if i start with e dot employee id greater than zero i'm going to get more row sources right so when you put a use underscore nl hint as well along with the leading e the expectation of oracle is to start with such a leading e 
in this case employee id which is going to give a less number of row sources okay so that is the that is how we are going to fix so before going that let's see the table statistics so i have shown this statistics in multiple of my sql training case studies so employees is having 107 rows and the employee id column is having 107 distinct values right so each employee id value is unique similar in the department table department id is the primary key i have mentioned this resolution whichever i stated and written it here and I have shared this case study in the link you can find that in the description of this video if, if you still want to confirm whichever condition of my employee is giving me less number of rows you can always fire this query to check that select counter star from employees where employee id in 100 to 105 is going to give me six rows which is a smaller row source and if I go with the second condition, select count of star from employees and employee ID is greater than zero, it is going to give me 107, which is a bigger row source. So obviously I have to start with employee ID in 100 to 105, right? So let's see after putting the hint, how the query looks like. So I just put the leading E hint and I have made the nested loop join between the departments and the employees table hint as well. Okay. So this is how the execution plan will look like after that. So let's analyze this execution plan again. So since if you make a parent child relationship, fourth is the first operation. Now if you see the fourth operation, it is doing an access on the employees 100 to 105 rather than accessing employee ID greater than zero. This is what we actually wanted and Oracle has actually performed the same. And you're seeing that the expected row is only six as compared to 107, which we saw in the previous execution plan. The next operation after that is going to be five, which is be, which will be a join operation between the employees and the departments table. And this is how we are going to fix this query. So I hope you guys liked this case study. And if there are any doubts or suggestions, please feel free to drop a comment and please subscribe to my video. Thank you so much.